another Reinventing the Wheel instructional video series by Gregory Jones. Today we're going to replace the CRT Havelina monitor with a LCD TFT high resolution 800 by 600 6 inch display. As you can see we've re removed the Havelina monitor. Keep in mind that this is a high voltage regular TV so you could get a nasty shock from it so we went ahead and pulled it out before we started messing around in here with the other parts. We just removed the four nuts and went ahead and pulled the thing out and that allowed us plenty of room to do the rest of what we wanted to do. The power supply, regulated power supply for the CRT monitors right here, we are not going to use that. We are however going to use the black and the red wires because they come directly from the switch on the dash and so that will power our new monitor. We have to enlarge the hole and so to do that we're going to base everything on the bottom edge of it to do all of our measurements and calculations to center this up both vertically, horizontally and make it aesthetically pleasing in the dash while making it also visible to the driver. We're going to use the bottom edge and again we're going to line up everything on that. Here we've removed all the switches from the dash. We've pulled the wires off the back of them individually, popped the switch out and then replaced the wires on the back. The one rotary switch that you see right there used to be the dimmer for the old monitor. We're going to leave that switch in place right now. We just went ahead and cut the wires to it. We're going to go ahead and pull the uh, radio out of here uh, and we just jiggle the bezel loose on it and that will come loose. A, typically a DIN radio has two tabs at the top and three tabs at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to have to use both hands here so you're probably not going to see it come off of there uh, but you'll see it after it's been removed. As you can see if you just jiggle the thing around it will come loose. Uh, it, it's just a matter of getting it popped off of there, getting it started, a uh, little bit of movement. And now we're going to slide the radio out. Now if you have the radio key, which is a metal key, you can slide that in and release these latches on each side. Otherwise you can just use what we're going to do, which is a screwdriver. There's a little spring latch on each side. You just push that to the center position and then pop the radio out from the back and uh, it's going to come out and uh, it will leave the DIN case uh, in there. The single DIN case will stay uh, in the dash once the radio comes out. And we're just going to pop the wires loose on the back. We've got some extra wiring on ours because it has a subwoofer, it has XM radio, it has a CD changer, and it has auxiliary input. So you probably don't have as many connections on the back of yours as we do. But either way, it just unplugs from the back. It's very simple. Uh, you'll notice down on the right hand side in there, and you're going to see it again, that's our Magnum Energy Auto Start System which we installed a couple of years ago. Uh, and We're going to remove these five screws now, uh, which will allow us to uh, pull the dash out. Uh, once we get that started to come out, you're going to notice that the, uh, that the one wire that we have to cut is that black wire right there which is the ground wire for the generator start run light. So we're just going to snip that off and then we're just going to re-terminal that whole green wire and put that right back on there uh, back in its original location. As far as the ignition switch goes down there uh, until we get back just a little bit get it pulled out a little uh, it's going to be kind of hard to get to. We pull the dash forward, you push those two tabs in and slide that off the back. You'll notice some dielectric greases on there from when we replaced the uh, um, ignition switch uh, back a uh, oh, year or so ago. Anyway, you just slide that out of there. Now we have the dash in hand. Uh, it's nice metal plate, stainless steel. We wish it was aluminum. It would be easier to cut, but it's no big deal. We're just going to pop out the plasma cutter and uh, we'll have at it here. There you can see the Magnum Energy Auto Start System. Uh, we wired it all in right there because the temperature sensor and everything's inside. Now, we're going to tape up the 
dash here in its entirety in blue painters tape so that we don't get any scratches on it. And we're going to use that to do all of our line drawings to make our new area to cut. As you can see we've completely covered it and now we're going to start making our marks as to where the new monitor is going to go. Uh, once we get this all drawn out, measured up, we measure it a couple times to make sure we are good to go and then we'll know exactly where we're going to put our monitor. And you can see that that upper area right there or the lower part of your screen is actually where the um, climate control system goes and we centered the monitor up between there and the uh, uh, the bottom which is the radio. Did some measuring, we've got our lines drawn, our outer lines are where the monitor is going to be, our inner lines are where we're going to actually cut out and when we make these cuts we're going to leave a small bit at each one of the corners that we're going to slice out in the end. Now we measure this all up again we make sure everything's nice and even uh, we've we've measured a couple times we found out that that's basically a, um, one centimeter from the um, climate control box and that does it and then those are our four studs inside that the monitor used to connect to and that's going to be completely removed and all we're doing here is we're lining up our pocket which holds our LCD monitor and we're putting that in place so that we can just make sure that it doesn't have any clearance problems. Now we just fire up the plasma cutter. Bear with us here just a second. This is just so simple and everybody's got one of these in their coach so it's no big deal. Actually we're going to fire up the Dremel cutter and uh, we're going to use that. Using cutting wheel we're going to make that cut. Again we've got it all covered with the tape so that we don't have any uh, uh, scratches or marks on our dash. We left those small little corner edges in there which we're going to slice out at the very last bit and then the panel drops out. And that is our removed piece with all the studs attached to it. This is a dry fit. We stuck it in there uh, to make sure the clearance fit. Uh, we had to do just a little bit of trimming on the inside again but we're good to go and uh, we like the way it fits. We like the way it lines up. To hold that pocket in place, all I did was snap it into place and then put a little bit of silicone sealer in six spots on the back to connect it to the frame. We put new screws in, they're stainless steel, that when we put the dash back together, to color those back in black, uh, you just color those in with a black sharpie and they look perfect. Here's the monitor working. Uh, we just strictly plugged all the old stuff back into the new stuff. Uh, out of the audit control box into the video in of this monitor and uh, as you can see it's working perfectly and this is a view from eye level me sitting in the seat and uh, it's much easier to see than the old monitor much more real estate the extra one inch diagonal monitor six inch diagonal monitor uh, gives us about twenty percent more uh, physical real estate to look at at least twenty percent more and it's just fantastic uh, the way that it turned out. The other added bonus is there's a audio video in. You could plug an iPod or an iPhone into this and use the nav out and show on this screen right here if you desired. Uh, total cost of this project was under $40 uh, including shipping. We bought the monitor for $26 uh, including shipping and one connector. Uh, we were well under $50 and under an hour and a half's worth of work total uh, for this entire project. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.